Andre, how's the registration process been for you? So Andre, we were able to knock that out in two seconds on Saturday. You know, I'm looking at these Christmas lights. It's Advent season for Laundria. What's your favorite part about Advent? Andre, my favorite part about Advent has to be all of the activities that take place here on the Avenue, the celebration as well as the anticipation of the birth of Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. As we think about the Advent season, what did you think about Pastor Cosby's sermon last week? Oh, man, look, Pastor does this thing where he preaches from the same passage, like 36,000 different ways. And then he has the nerve to use like two words from the passage and be like, that's it. Can he even do that? I think he can, and he does. Oh, yeah, he does. Church family, I'm Andre Kahn, Jr. And I'm Philandria Wilson. And it's time for your Avenue, Avenue News. News. Church family, it's time for Bible study. That's right, grab your Bible and catch us on the website, Facebook, YouTube, or our app this Wednesday at 12 noon or 7 p.m. as we're led in a powerful time of study with Pastor Cosby. Christmas on the Avenue is back and we are at it again, enhancing the holiday for children, youth, families, and seniors in our community. The last day to make donations is Wednesday, December 15th, and they can be dropped off or mailed directly to the church. Visit the events page of our website for a complete listing of the donations needed, as well as a link to the Amazon shopping list. For additional information, please contact Sister Agnes Johnson at aejohnson at wheelerbc.org. The holidays are upon us, and while we know that some people are excited about them, there are others who are not. So will you join us on December 13th at noon for a powerful conversation by three of our clergy team members as they discuss how we can protect our mental health during these times and provide wisdom to keep our focus and our faith. We're praying that something will be said that will be beneficial and you can share with others. The youth ministry is looking for volunteers to join our virtual and in-person team. There are opportunities to assist with Bible study, youth Sunday school, and our youth worship experience. If you are gifted and willing, you can work with The Way, the Wheeler Avenue Youth by visiting the events page on our website to sign up. Please contact Reverend Richard Boone IV at rboone at wheelerbc.org for more information. Church family, mark your calendar. On Friday, December 17th at 7 p.m., our music and fine arts ministry is excited to announce the return of our live nativity entitled The Bethlehem Experience. The entire campus will be transformed into the city of Bethlehem. The Bethlehem Experience is an interactive reenactment of the night on which our Savior was born. Come and experience the various nativity scenes, the sights and sounds of the city of Bethlehem, visit the shops, and participate in the arts and crafts. There will be many live animals throughout the city, and there will even be a petting zoo for our children. So bring the entire family. Masks are required. You can register online at willerbc.org. We look forward to seeing you and your entire family on Friday, December 17th at 7 p.m. for the 2021 Live Nativity, the Bethlehem Experience. There's so much taking place, and we hope you stay connected. For more information, follow us on Flocknote, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, and be sure to check out our app. You did download it, right? I'm Philandria Wilson. And I'm Andre Kahn, Jr. And this has been your Avenue, Avenue News. News. Remember, we are Wheeler wherever. Church family, it's time for worship.
Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. We've come to rejoice and be glad in it. For I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear the wrong. gather in his name to worship him but likewise we petition him and as we come we come to a God who has allowed us to come boldly before the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need their names that are scrolling on the credit on the wall on the screen but likewise you didn't come in here without carrying some names and even your luggage of burden. And I pray now that you will do what the scripture says, cast all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Here we are, our Father. Your children are knee bent and body bowed. Humbled again that you've allowed our days to roll on one more day. We rose and the sun still was shining. We still felt the breeze of a new day. You said as long as earth remains, there'll be seed time and harvest. So I thank you, God, for whatever season of life we're in, you are still God. From generation to generation, you are God. And just as you took care of our ancestors in Africa and in the Middle Passage to America, you are still taking care of us today. So we thank you now that you are the God for whom nothing shall be called impossible for anxiety, for death, disease, even devastation on Kentucky. We are praying that your hand of mercy and grace will restore. You will lift up again. You will rebuild again. You will revive again. You will comfort and you will keep us. And even now, you are making things well. I thank you now for this gathered body of Wheeler wherever, those in the sanctuary and those online. I thank you that you hear every heart felt prayer, every hand that's raised, every head that's bowed. You will touch and anoint 
and bless again. And you, God, do what you've always done. Keep us from the evil one. Protect us and hold us. Keep us in the hollowness of your hand. Will you receive our worship today? Bless our pastor as he breaks open the bread of life. Bless the hearts that hear it. And let us be those who will run saying, Jesus is alive. We thank you that you sent him. We thank you that you blessed us. And now, God, we give you all of our hallelujah and all of our praise. For you still deserve the glory. For there is no other man given amongst men whereby which we must be saved. So now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can think, ask, or imagine according to the power that is at work within us by the power of that sweet name, that precious name, that darling name, that name that redeems, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah and amen. Oh yes, God, we thank you for your name. We bless you for your name. Hallelujah. So glad we know your name this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I bless your name. I bless your name. I give you honor. I give you praise. You are. Oh, yes, we do, Jesus. Oh, God, I give Oh, yes, hallelujah. You reign. You are the Lord. Truth in the way. I bless your name. God, I bless your name. Let's go. 
Let's see what the gospel writer Luke has to say about the name Jesus. And in the sixth month, reading from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38, the King James Version renders the text this way. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom, and of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Thus ends the reading of the word of God for the people of God. Please remain standing for this morning's hymn. Hallelujah.
this morning. Hallelujah. I want you to think of one thing about our God. And as we sing this song, I want you to join in with us as we reflect on the beauty of God. We see him seated on his throne, reigning in all of his majesty and power. Come on, put your hands together like this. The song says this. I saw the Lord seated on the throne and the train of his robe fills this temple and they
about the Lord of Lords. We're talking about the great I am. We're talking about the King of Kings, isn't he? The Lord of hosts, the Lord of everything. The one who sits high and he looks low. Yes, he does. Isn't the Lord beautiful? Isn't the Lord beautiful? Isn't he beautiful? Isn't he beautiful? Say it. of Jesus and all the ways that he's made for you and then we begin to reflect on his beauty in all things the Lord is beautiful in all things the Lord is great in all things the Lord is kind in all things he's mighty in that day isn't he beautiful isn't he beautiful isn't he beautiful say isn't he beautiful say isn't he beautiful say isn't he beautiful say isn't he The King of Heaven, be glorified. Everybody say, all creation. creation. Come on, they're going to testify.
مهمان سیدن یا جهابا دلان موسن یه This third Sunday of Advent, why don't you give great praise to our great God who is worthy to be praised. We thank God for Jesus on this Lord's Day, and I am delighted to welcome special guests who may be present with us. I'm going to ask that if this is your very first time worshiping with us here at Wheeler Avenue, would you stand so that we might acknowledge your presence among us? Any first time visitors with us, would you stand? We want to thank God for you on this Lord's Day. Amen. My sisters, I see you. God be praised for you. My brother, God bless you. Amen. To each of you who stands as first-time friend to the Wheeler Avenue Church, we are delighted that you've opted to worship with us on this Lord's Day. And we pray that you would be blessed having shared in worship with us. We want for you to make yourselves at home. We pray that you would enjoy the entirety of this experience of worship, even as you engage in it. We would love to call you family members here at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. So we pray that you would take your time leaving, but hurry up and come on back whenever God gives you opportunity. Church family, help me one more time. Thank God for all of our first time friends. Amen. You may claim your seats. As you do, we likewise want to thank God for the entire to the Wheeler Wherever family. Wherever you are tuning in from, we thank God that you've opted to worship with us virtually. And if it's your very first time worshiping with us virtually, we'd love to know that. So let us know in any, either the chats in Facebook or YouTube, and we would be the better having received that piece of information from you. We'll be able to greet you appropriately having known that information. And we thank God for all of the family of faith who joins with us virtually. Come on, thank God for our virtual family of faith this Sunday morning. Likewise, in our presence is Sister Catherine Thomas. We thank God for her. She is running for judge for the 184th Criminal District Court. Sister Thomas, we thank God for you, and we pray that you would get more information about her and her campaign, and we pray God's blessings over you and your future in this election season. We likewise want to thank God for the entirety of the family of faith known as Wheeler Avenue. It's a joy to see each of you on this Sunday. Look at someone close to you and just smile at them with your eyes. Let them know that you're delighted to see them on this Sunday. We welcome all of our friends and family on this day to the Avenue. Welcome you to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. 
What a joy it is to see each of you who has made your way to the house of God this morning and to all of those around the world who, show, who share with us, who view us. We thank God for each one of you as well. We are grateful that we have made it, as the Reverend Johnson has said, to the third Sunday of Advent. It's the second Sunday of December, but the third Sunday in this season of Advent. And we thank God that we are moving inexorably closer to the celebration of the birth of our Savior, who is Jesus Christ the Lord. Anybody still glad to know Jesus? Anybody love Jesus? He's a wonder in my soul, and we thank God for Jesus this morning and every morning. I thank God for those of you uh, who have been working with us, walking with us during this season of prayer on Wednesday mornings. All of you who have shared with us have been a blessing to us by your very presence, even on our telephone conference call. And I thank God for you. I'll say more about that in a moment. But I do want to thank God for uh, the 2,373 callers who made their way to our conference call this past Wednesday. God bless you one and all. Thank you so much for taking prayer seriously. And of course, we'll be back in prayer Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. Hope that you will join us. I know that some of you have had some difficulty calling in, but I thank you for your persistence. I thank you so much for insisting that you make it onto that call so that we as a church family uh, can begin our Wednesday morning in prayer. So thank you so much for that. And of course, we'll be in prayer at 6 p.m. as Dr. Barnett and the prayer ministry shall lead us. And we invite you to be a part of the experiences of prayer. For those who have been away from us for a while, maybe you haven't tuned in for a while, our prayer call has, our prayer call number has changed. You just saw it on the screen. It's a brand new number over the last several weeks. And so we want to make sure that everyone has the new number and that you call in and share with us at the six o'clock hour. Last, um, uh, last week we did have, I mentioned some difficulty and uh, many persons said they had to call in multiple times. Please continue to do that. We're going to work out whatever kinks we can work out uh, to make sure that it is more seamless and you're able to dial in without as much anxiety, but please don't stop calling. And if you have to do as some of our, our creative members have done, if you get on, hook your sister and brother up and just put them on three-way and then let them call somebody else. It'd just be a little easier that way. Uh, whatever it takes, whatever it takes, let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Our final Bible study for this year will be this coming Wednesday is our final Bible study. Of course, we will go on our winter break. We'll close all uh, the workings of the church down except for Sunday morning. And so we ask uh, that you will be a part of Bible study at noon and or 7 p.m. this coming Wednesday. And of course, we want to look forward tomorrow to our mental health moment. Our mental health moment, Dr. Barbara usually has mental health moments on the fourth Monday of the month, but because of the holiday, she's going to move it to tomorrow. So tomorrow at noon, we'll have our mental health moment, and we invite you to share with us throughout the entirety of the pandemic. We've been having these so that we can stay sane in an insane environment. And so we invite you to join with our Ministry of Counseling, Christian Counseling, as they lead us through this mental health moment tomorrow. This is the second Sunday of the month, and every second Sunday we celebrate anniversaries. And there are folk who have anniversaries in the month of December just before all of the couples stand. I'm going to ask our chairman of deacons, Deacon Brian Hicks and his wife, Deaconess Lisa Hicks, to stand. Today is their 29th anniversary. Come on and celebrate with them today. Where's the deaconess, Brother Brian? What'd you say? It's been a long weekend. Is that what I heard you say? Oh, I see. Party like a rock star. Amen. Praise the Lord. But well, we celebrate with you. If you're watching Deaconess Hicks, God bless you. Celebrate with you. Everybody celebrating anniversaries this month. Please stand. Oh, all the shackles are there. Please stand. I see the Carters there. We praise God for all of these couples. Come on, let's sing happy anniversary to all of these precious people. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary everybody. Praise the Lord for all of you. you. May be seated in the presence of the Lord. May you have a phenomenal month of celebration. 
uh, as you continue to praise God for the great things he's doing in all of your lives. Of course, you noticed yesterday that tornadoes ripped through six states, six states, and you know how we roll at Wheeler Avenue. We've got to do our best to help in the recovery of those brothers and sisters in those states. You'll hear more about it. We're going to coordinate our effort this week, and we'll make sure that we make contact with some sisters and brothers in those states so that we can ensure the recovery of those whom we can help to recover in those six states that have been so devastated over the past several hours. So please keep our sisters and brothers in your prayers. Listen, I'm delighted to have what I know as lifelong friends. I've got some wonderful lifelong friends who are a blessing to my life and uh, whom I seek to be a blessing to as well. One of my lifelong friends came to town this weekend and I'm so excited that he is here. He has been here before. He's actually preached one of our uh, church anniversaries in time past. Reverend Lamel McMorris, will you please stand, sir? My high school buddy. That's my buddy from high school. Amen. He's a clergyman, businessman, fighter for justice, especially economic justice in the black community. And I'm so grateful that my brother, who has been very much involved in so much of our civil rights struggle over the last several years with NAACP, working with uh, National Action Network, working with Reverend Jesse Jackson and Reverend Al Sharpton and so many others. Thank you, and Martin Luther King III, and especially Martin Luther King III. They have a very strong relationship, and I'm grateful that he is here. Uh, Reverend Preston Allen, that's your Morehouse brother, sitting right by, in front of you right there, and we praise God for you. He didn't, he didn't go to Fisk, but I appreciate the fact that uh, you know, he's still my friend, still my friend. That's my brother beloved, and I thank God for him, and I welcome him back to Wheeler Avenue today. It's offering time in the Lord's house and in your house if you're not here. It's offering time. You know the several ways by which we give digitally, and I hope that you will give as you are led, uh, as you will give your tithe, your offering, your gifts to Missions and Mercy, and your gifts to uh, the building effort. We're so grateful that you consistently and generously give to the work of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. And so, if you'll take out your devices, and if you'll use that QR code, or if you text to give, or however you give, if you give through the website, let's give unto the Lord after we shall have prayed. If you want to give your gifts um, by hand, of course, there will be a leader, probably Deacon Omar Reed, Trustee Reed, who will be in the atrium ready to receive your gifts immediately following the benediction. I want to thank those around the world, across this country more especially, across this country who give to the work of Wheeler Avenue with regularity. As late as last night, I opened more envelopes from folk who are not members of our church uh, here at Wheeler Avenue. They're members of other congregations, but because this church has blessed them, especially during this pandemic, they are being a blessing to us. So thank you, sisters and brothers across this country for your continued investment in Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Uh, you know, I grew up in Chicago, Rem McMorris, a uh, Limbs Barbecue. There's a place, a barbecue joint in, in Chicago called Limbs Barbecue. Limbs Barbecue, I don't, I, I, you know the owner of Limbs Barbecue? I did not know her at first, uh, but she sent a letter, the owner of Limbs Barbecue, the place been in operation for more than 50 years in Chicago. She sent a letter saying that Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church has been a blessing to her, and she sent a check for $1,500 just to say that we appreciate the ministry of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Thank God for her, for Limbs Barbecue, and for those individuals. Roy Hudson, I got your gift. Thank you so much. All those individuals who make investments in Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you so much for your consistency, your generosity toward us. You've been faithful toward us in every way, and we thank you for it. Now, oh God, we bring to you our tithes and our offerings, seeking to be faithful to you, seeking to honor you with the gifts that you've given to us, seeking to prioritize you with the tithe and to ensure that the church continues to work in excellence with our offerings, with our gifts to missions and mercy. We use these gifts so that the least, the last, the left out, the lost, the left behind will be blessed even as we are blessed. Take now our gifts as you have given them to us and receive them from these hands of ours as we use these devices, as we bring them to the church, so that in all ways and in all things you might be glorified through the ministry, the mission, 
the work and the witness of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Use us for your glory. Bless every gift and every giver. Let no one lack as a consequence of what they give today. But may your children always be blessed as you give them some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. So we will always have the testimony of our elders. We can't beat God giving no matter how we try. God, we thank you for victory in our finances. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give unto our God as the music ministry prepares us for the word of God.
that should be lifted high among all of God's people. It is the name that is above every name. The name at which demons tremble. The name at which every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of the Father. Will you help me celebrate Jesus on a Sunday morning at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church? Precious is his name. Precious is his name. Thank you, music ministry. We appreciate you. The Reverend Piles has read our scripture uh, context, all of those verses from verse 26 to verse 38 of Luke chapter 1. I return our attention to Luke chapter 1. I want to focus our sermonic spotlight on verse 37, Luke chapter 1, beginning with verse 37. I want to read it, you know, we usually use the New International Version around here. I'll refer to that later, but I want to read it from the old school King James Version today. It's the way I learned it back in Chicago. Luke chapter 1 at verse 37 from the King James Version says, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. That's enough. Amen. Praise God for his holy word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord for with God nothing shall be impossible hallelujah for the time and his hours to share together on this Sunday morning I want to talk very briefly actually from the subject God can do it God God can do it <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Whatever you need God to do, just get it in your mind right now. Just get it in your mind. God can do it. I'll admit it, church family, I love a good challenge. I love to be stretched. I love to be told what I can't do so I can prove that it can be done. I love a good challenge. I've always loved a good challenge. That's why I sit down at a spades table with anybody, because I love a good challenge. Wish you would try to come this way. I don't play. If you're looking for Reverend Cosby at the spades table, he ain't there. That's that boy from the south side who sits at the space table. I love a good challenge. I love to be stretched. I love to seek to push the bounds of my limitations, see what I can learn, see what I can do, see what I can accomplish. If I, was to, I was told as a child that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I just had enough sense to believe that if the scripture said it, it must be so. So I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Don't tell me what can't be done. Just show me how it can be done and I believe it can be accomplished. I suspect that part of my rationale for that kind of mentality and mindset is that as a child, I. I slipped up on Luke chapter 1, verse 37. And that verse of scripture has held on to me even when I almost couldn't hold on to it. I remember hearing over and over again that with God, nothing shall be impossible. I'll admit it is probably my second favorite verse of the entirety of the Advent season. To be sure, my favorite verse of the Advent season is Matthew 1, 21. And it says, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. That's, that's my favorite verse of Advent. But a close second is right here in Luke chapter 1, verse 37, when, when the angel Gabriel tells Mary that with God, nothing shall be impossible. 
And I like that because what we learn in the Advent season, what we learn as we prepare for the coming of the Lord Jesus into our world as that baby born in Bethlehem is that God intentionally chooses to do that which is beyond the norm, that which is outside of the bounds of human possibility to prove to us that God cannot be limited, restricted, confined to our human mentality. I like that about God, that God refuses to be placed in our boxes of limitation, that God refuses to be confined by our narrow mentalities, that God is always beyond what we can do as human beings. God is always showing himself to be the one who is able to go beyond what we can think or imagine, that God is the one who continues to show himself to be God. Because when you think it can't be done, God shows up and says, oh, but I can do it. I, I like that about God. God shows up and says, I can do it. I can make everything work out for your good. From the Old Testament through the New Testament, God is showing us that God is able to do it. And today, my assignment is clear. I came to raise someone's faith in the God that we've been singing about, in the God we've been praying to, in the God we've been shouting about I want to raise your faith so that you leave after the benediction testifying to anybody who will listen even if it's just yourself God can do it yes and God can do it the story of our ancestry is that God can do it how do you take an enslaved people move them through hundreds of years of servitude and then they still come out with smiles and shouts of joy how do you take of people who have been through as much grief and trauma as we've been through and then we get to 2021 and on a Sunday morning we can come in here and lift up our hands and shout hallelujah because we serve a God who is able to take you over your trauma and over your grief and through your depression and give you victory in spite of your adversity. Can I find 10 people in here who can testify man if you knew my whole story. You wouldn't believe that I'm sitting here with a Bible in my lap or a Bible on an app because I have trusted in the God who can do it. I need to talk to somebody who's been sick but God raised you up. I need you to testify to your pew partner God can do it. I need to talk to somebody who's been broke but God saw you through and paid some bills. I need you to testify that God can do it. I need to talk to somebody who had to deal with some sexist reality on the job, but you've been able to overcome it because God can do it. I need to talk to somebody who's had to deal with some racial trauma throughout the years of your life. I need you to testify that God can do it. With God, Nothing is impossible. I hear you. All things are possible. And I love that. That's the refer reverberation from the Old Testament through the New Testament. Don't you hear the question being asked by God to Sarah? Is there anything? too hard for God? Is there anything your God can't do? Today, I want you to take the brakes off God. I want you to release God from your human limitations. I want you to release God from your human restrictions. With God, nothing shall be impossible. That's the story that is before us today. I'm convinced of it. I believe it. That's why I preach it. I know it because I've seen it over and over and over again. I didn't learn this in seminary. I learned this through the struggles of life that God is able to do whatever needs to be done. God can do it. Yeah. How do you know God can do it, Brother Cosby? How do you know, but Pastor? How, how do you know? I submit to you just two things for your consideration this Sunday morning. I submit that God can do it because the annunciation dictates it. Okay, come on, let's work for a little while. I submit that God can do it because the annunciation dictates it. Let the church say annunciation. 
as a big old five dollar theological word for the angelic announcement of the identity of in the birth of Christ okay it's the big old five dollar word that we like to use for the proclamation that that the Christ is coming into the world that the angel Gabriel comes and says it it's the annunciation of the church say annunciation now, yes, we could say announcement, but that's not big enough. You got to say annunciation. Yeah, we could say the proclamation, but that's too common. We got to say annunciation. When you come to the Advent season, you got to learn the word annunciation. Say up in the balcony, annunciation. Thank you so much. Here it is. The annunciation is, is that which is the presentation of Gabriel to Sister Mary that God's about to do something amazing in her life. The Annunciation is when Gabriel comes to Mary, and that's what we've read from verse 26 to verse 38. And he begins a conversation with her. She does not expect this conversation. She's not been looking for this conversation. Just out of nowhere, Brother Gabriel shows up and begins to talk to her about what God is about to do in her life. That God just springs this on her. God just shows up and says, you're about to be used for God's purposes. Gabriel speaks on behalf of God, and when he speaks, he gives to Mary vital information concerning the identity of the Son of God. Every annunciation, there were several from the Old Testament through the New, every annunciation was to speak about the vitality or the identity of the one who was to come into the world. But this annunciation, which is the primary one, the penultimate one, shows to us that God sends Gabriel, watch, verse 26, verse 27, verse 28, fast-paced fast, fast -paced movement. He sends Gabriel in the sixth month to, to a virgin, pledged to a man named Joseph in Nazareth, a town in Galilee, and says, hey, hey, God's about to hook you up. Um, that's not exactly how it's written. He says, virgin pledged to be married to a married man named Joseph. I'm reading from the New National Version. A descendant of David, the virgin's name was Mary. Angel went to her and said, greetings. You who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Now that ought to bless you. It blessed a few folk right over here because you must understand that Sister Mary is what most would call a peasant girl. She's not of, of significant means and resources. She's a young girl probably in her early teenage years and God shows up to her through Gabriel and says, hey, you peasant girl, in your early teens, you're highly favored. The Lord is with you. Okay, still the same people over here got it. I got to make sure the folk over here get it. God shows up through Gabriel, and he speaks to a teenage girl who is a peasant girl, not of significant means. She's of no nobility, but God speaks to her, and he says to her, hey, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Now, you got to catch this. This makes no sense. How you going to tell a peasant girl she's highly favored? How you going to tell some teenage child she's highly favored and the Lord is with you? But when the Lord wants to prove that he is outside our boxes, he is beyond our limitations, he will show up not to the nobility and the aristocracy, but he will show up to peasant girls and let them know God's about to use you. Because when God uses you, he does not have to look toward human characteristics and human realities and human perceptions to use anybody he has chosen. God will choose to use anybody. That's, that's, that's why I preach with such passion, because I know I'm not worthy. And that's why some of these folks sing with such joy because they realize they don't deserve the privilege of ministering in the Lord's house. And that's why some of you came in here with your hands lifted up and your mouths filled with praise because you recognize you don't deserve to have another day and another chance. But somebody ought to thank God that in the midst of every other reality of life, God looks at you and you and you and me and says, you're highly favored. The Lord is with you. <laughs> it blesses me to know that God will favor me even when I don't deserve it. 
It, it is the bestowal of grace. That's what that word charismatuzo. It means the bestowal, bestowal of grace that God literally says, hey you, I'm about to bless you. Wait, did you hear me earlier? I said she wasn't looking for this. She wasn't anticipating this. She didn't see this coming. God just broke into her situation and said, this one's for you. I don't know if you've ever had one of them surprise hookups from God. I need to find somebody in this church who can testify. There have been some days I wasn't looking for it. I didn't anticipate it. I didn't ask for it. God just showed up and made a way out of no way. God just showed up and opened some door I needed him to open. And God just showed up and made somebody in my life bless me that I wasn't even looking for. Somebody can testify. He's the God of unexpected blessing. It is just the bestowal. He just hunts you down with another blessing. Woo, I like that. I didn't even plan that. I said he just hunts you down with another blessing. Hey, hey, hey. He just hunts you down with another blessing. He wakes you up, tap you on the shoulder. I'm about to hook you up, about to hook you up. Open your eyes, open your eyes. He just makes sure that you know that there is nothing too hard for our God. So he shows up in an unexpected place and does an unexpected thing with an unexpected person. And he makes her to understand that the Lord is with her. Now I love the way it reads here because he says the Lord is with you, but, but, Mary understands her station. Mary understands who she is. She is not confused by her life's reality. So your Bible says, verse 30, verse 29, Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. She's, she's scratching her head. She's trying to figure it out. She's trying to, she's trying to really process what's going on. And the Bible says, that the angel had to calm her down. Talk her off the ledge. I say it like that because there's some people in here who know good and well that there have been some seasons in your life when the Lord had to talk you off the ledge. Or the Lord sent some messenger into your situation and said, hey, get yourself together. Hey, stop acting all crazy. Stop acting. Stop talking like that. Stop thinking like that. And he says, calm down. I got you. I got you. I know where you are. I know what you need. I, I've got you. He says, the angel said, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. And here it comes. You will conceive and give birth to a son. You are to call him Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. He will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Now, church family, you've got to understand, you've seen the word David, the name David, twice in this pericope, in this passage of Scripture. You saw it in verse 26, and then you just saw it again in verse 32. That is important because you will recall that God made a promise to David that his line of succession would never have an end, that he would always have an heir on the throne. If you were listening on the first Sunday of Advent, on the last Sunday of last month, I tried to tell you that David David was on the throne, Solomon was on the throne, and his lineage was to be on the throne forever until Jesus, who reigns forever. Okay. And so the Bible says that he's going to come through the line of David, and you've seen this more than once, but not only is he called the son of David, in two other verses he's called the son of the Most High, and he's called the son of God. It is a trilogy of titles given to us in this passage. It lets us know that this is no ordinary person who's going to come through the womb of this Virgin Mary, the son of the Most High, the son of David, the son of God. This is the one we've been waiting for. This is the one we've been anticipating. This is the one that all of the Jewish community has heard was on his way. The Messiah, the promised one, is on his way. Yeah, and that's good to them. That's good. But Mary is tripping because she understands that she is not one of aristocracy. Have I told you that? She is not one of nobility. But God decides to bring himself down 
from the loftiness of his majesty to meet us right where we are. Oh, child of God, the gift of Advent is that God reduces himself to us since we can't increase ourselves to him. Did you hear me? I said the mystery of Advent is that God, the great God of glory, reduces himself to us so he can fit in a virgin's womb so that we can grow to be everything he wants us to be. I love this about the Lord. And so we find this all out and Mary's asking the question, how can this be? I've never known a man, she understands, and she's never had sexual relations with her betrothed husband, Joseph, and she's trying to figure out how in the world is all this going to take place since I know the natural course of things. I know how things are supposed to operate. I went to class, I learned the biology lessons, I know how things are supposed to go. And then this man, this angel Gabriel, drops the bomb on it. The Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. The power of the Most High is going to overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Now, did you catch it? I just gave you good reason to at least nod an amen if you don't say it. He says, let me tell you how it's going to work. The Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. The power of the Most High is going to overshadow you. And the Holy One born in you is going to be called the Son of God. They tell me the third time is a charm, Mel, so let me try it again. The Bible says the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. The power of the Most High is going to overshadow you. And the holy thing born in you is going to be called the Son of God. Hear me when I tell you, God will take an ordinary individual, a human individual, and hook that individual up with the Holy Ghost. And so many things that you never imagined possible will take place. Because I need 10 people in this cathedral who know that the power of the Holy Ghost is bigger than the power on your job, bigger than the power of your finances, bigger than the power of your networks and connections. I need somebody who has a relationship with the Holy Ghost to thank Thank God that he is able to do for, in, through, with me more than I could ever do by myself. I need to find an ordinary person who takes the Holy Ghost with you to work and he allows you to do your work with excellence. I need to find an ordinary individual who takes the Holy Ghost with you when you're dealing with your parental relationships and parental responsibility and testify that he'll let you do more than you ever anticipated. I need somebody who understands the Holy Ghost is not relegated to the sanctuary. He will meet you in the streets. Is there somebody who can thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost? So I'm convinced that God can do it because the Annunciation dictates it. What Gabriel showed up to tell Sister Mary dictates that God is able to do it. Nothing is impossible with God. Now I like that, but may I please give it to you from the newest international version. The newest international version reads verse 37 like this. For no word from God will ever fail. I love preaching to this church. I love preaching because y'all get it on the first try. I said the Bible says no word from God will ever fail. That's why I had to tell you that the Annunciation dictates it. God wasn't offering a suggestion. God wasn't offering up some compromise. If God said it, it shall be done. God didn't need anybody to approve it. God didn't need anybody to vote on it. If God said it, it shall be done. I need 10 or 12 people in this church to just get in your spirit. One word from the Lord. Because if God speaks one word over your life, it will change the trajectory of your life. Is there anybody who's ever gotten a word that lets you know weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning is there anybody who ever got one word my God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus is there anyone who's ever gotten one word no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper I need some Bible believing word believing folk in this church to testify Lord speak a word I love this, that God does not need consensus. God just speaks, 
and things change. I said, your God does not need consensus. He just speaks and things change. In the beginning, God said, let there be. And from that day till this, everything that God dictated continues to display his power. I love it. I love it. I, I speak to you today to encourage you that God can do it. I said, I came to encourage you, church, that God, your God, my God, our God, can do it. How do you know, but Pastor? I know because the annunciation dictates it. But I know that God can do it. Watch this last thing. Because God is already doing it. I'm about to shout out my shoes up here, I promise you. Y'all just might have to contain me. Go get one of them nurses to fan me. I feel like hollering right there. I said, God can do it because God is already doing it. Praise dancers. God can do it because God is already doing it. How do you know, Brother Pastor? Because I gave you two good glimpses. Reverend Janella read it. I gave you two good glimpses into the fact that God is already doing it. It was, it was, almost, it was almost covert language. But let me give it to you again. Uh, verse 26, the first three words of New International Version says, in the sixth month. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Uh, um, and then in verse 36, the angel Gabriel says, even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. I said, God can do it because he's already doing it. Verse 26, in the sixth month. You got to flash back. It's a throwback to the verses that preceded it because the angel Gabriel had just left Zechariah. And Zechariah is the husband of Elizabeth. Elizabeth and Zechariah are old. They are in their old age. They have never conceived and bore any children because Elizabeth has been barren. But the angel Gabriel goes to her with an annunciation and says that God is going to allow her and her husband Zechariah to conceive and have a child and they're going to name him John. He's going to be the forerunner of Jesus Christ. He had to have a six-month runway. So he could be the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. He's already doing it, I'm trying to tell you. And so by the time we get to Mary, Gabriel says, God is already up to what he's about to do in you. He's doing it over there so you can believe it over here. He's, he wants you to perceive it in somebody else so you can conceive it and achieve it for yourself. I like this. God will always show you a picture of what he can do so you won't try to tell him what he can't do. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said, Wheeler Avenue? I said God will show you a picture of what he can do so you won't show up talking about what he can't do. And I need 10 people in this church to help me close this message and begin to celebrate the fact that God always gives you a glimpse of his ability so that you will know that there is nothing too hard for your God. I need somebody at the Wheeler Avenue Church to help me close this message now and begin to testify with everybody around you that God is still able to make ways out of no way. I know it because I've seen him do it. I've seen it happen in other folks' lives. So I know God can do it in my life. And that's what I need somebody to have enough faith to believe today. That no matter how long you've been waiting for it, no matter how long you've been trusting God for it, if God is able to do it over there, the Bible says he's no respecter of persons. He's able to do it over here. 
I need 10 or 12 people to help me close now and begin to celebrate the God who is still up to something. The God who can do it because he's already doing it. I need you to look around this church this morning because in this church are some testimonies of what God can do. I need you to look all around this building today because all around you you'll see witnesses of what God can do. God will raise up somebody who came from obscurity and take them to places of notoriety to prove to you he can still find you where you are and lift you to where you need to be. Look around this place, you'll find somebody who can testify that God will raise you up and despite an extended period out of school, he can take you back to school, help you to get the degree and make a difference in the world you're living in. I need somebody to testify that the God we serve is still able to show you glimpses of his glory so that you will not deny the fact that he is able to make a way out of no way. I need somebody to testify. He'll give you a glimpse of somebody who bounced back from moral failure to prove to you he'll take you, dust you off, clean you up, restore you, and give you a testimony of his goodness and his grace. I need somebody who's a single parent in here who can tell somebody across the aisle that he allowed me to raise these children and they're doing pretty well in the world. Is there anybody in here who can testify? He'll give you more than you ever expected. He'll give you more than you ever dreamed of. I need, I need, I need, I need somebody who will help me testify. There is nothing too hard for God. Nothing shall be called impossible with the one who's the sovereign God of the universe. So I need you to get ready when you leave church this morning. I need you to get ready when you leave the parking lot today. I need you to get ready when you get back home today. Cause I got a funny feeling and a stinging suspicion that God's about to blow your mind. That God's about to do the phenomenal. That God's about to do the amazing. Open your eyes, child. There ain't time to be sleeping now. Open your eyes, child. He's about to do something that you never dreamed of. Is there anybody in here who's expecting God to make a way out of no way? Expecting God to lift up your bowed down head? Expecting God to do great and mighty things now under him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that's the Holy Ghost y'all according to the power that's at work within us to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus from now throughout eternity world without end amen amen let the church say amen any way you bless me Lord I'll be satisfied won't he do it I said won't he do it somebody shout yeah shout yeah hey, yeah Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Nothing shall be called impossible with God. And so I love it. That's Mr. Strap. I love it because verse 38. After Gabriel said, nothing's impossible with God, Sister Mary said, all right, be it unto me, even as you have said. 
Do what you want to do, God. Do what you're going to do, God. I believe that you're able to work miracles in my life. Hallelujah. I want you to position yourself for God to work a miracle. Receive it. Embrace it. Accept it. I'm trying not to be too personal here. We got to go. Time is out. But as I look at my friend and myself, both of us coming from single parent households, south side of Chicago, nobody ever anticipated that God would use us the way God has used us. And God keeps taking us to higher and higher levels. Be it unto me, Lord, even as you have said. Be it unto me, even as you have said. Somebody's got a similar testimony, don't you? Come on, look back over your life when others may have counted you out or discounted you. But God said, you the one, you the one I want, you the one I want. You the one I want to give joy to. You the one I want to put a smile on your face. You the one I want to show you that I can bless you even if you don't have everything you want to have. You the one I want to buy a new house. You the one I want to be able to have that day. You the one I want to show favor to. They said you can't. They said you couldn't. God says you don't have to. I can. You just be receptive. Be open to the endless possibilities. Stay yielded to the voice of God. Stay amenable to the will of God. Say, yes, Lord. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, God can do it. Maybe there's one listening to me this morning who is receptive now to the will and way of God. Maybe there's one listening to me this morning who is receptive to the plan and purpose of God for your life. Man, woman, child, whomever you are, wherever you are, I want you to start walking toward me this morning. I invite you to a relationship with a God who is strong and mighty, a God who still highly favors his people. They're coming already. God bless you. They had in their mind to come this morning. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord for you. Maybe there are others who need to come this morning. If you're in the balcony, start walking on down this way. If you're on this first floor, make your way into the aisle that's closest to you that allow you to make your way all the way to the front of the room. The invitation is extended to you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. God bless you, ma'am. Praise God for your decision. Praise God for your decision. Maybe there's another who needs to come. Maybe there's another who needs to come and say yes to the favor of the Lord on your life. Maybe there's another who needs to say, I want to be a part of the Wheeler Avenue Church. I'm saved, I know I am. I'm part of the family of faith and I just need a family of fellowship with whom I can grow and develop and mature and become everything that God wants me to become. I see you moving back there, come on this way. Come to the center aisle, please. Come to the center aisle, yes. God bless you, God bless you. Maybe there's another who needs to come. Sister, brother, these have already come. Maybe you'll be the next one. If you're in the balcony, make your way down this way on the first floor come on even right now Ce celebrate them as they make their way this way god bless you our church is intentionally intergenerational so man woman or child whatever your stage or age of life may be i want you to come toward us even right now i see these distinguished gentlemen coming from the balcony god bless you my brothers make your way on down this way praise god for you
from the youngest to the eldest, God bless you. Come on, come on, come on. I see my sisters moving. Make your way to the center aisle and come this way. Make your way to the center aisle. God bless you. I see you, my brother, walking behind them. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Lord, I believe. God bless you. Lord, I believe. Come on, my friends, I see you coming. Come on, usher, greet them, make them to come this way. All things are possible. Come on, they're still coming. Won't you celebrate while they walk that center aisle? That's that mother bringing that precious girl down the aisle. All things are possible. I see you coming from the balcony, my sister. Praise the Lord, we're waiting for you. Deacon Buxton, please make sure that sister comes down this way. Deacon Buxton, Lord, I believe. Yes, she's coming. Come on, sis, we're waiting on you. Lord, I believe. Who else needs to come? I see you coming from the balcony. We're waiting on you. Come on, church, celebrate as they come. All things. God bless you, ma'am. Yeah. All things. Come on, come on. Who else needs to come? Come on, come on. This is your day. This is your day. From this side of the room. Come on. All things are possible. God bless you, young man. Praise God for your decision. Come on, I like it. Come on. Come on. Who else? Who else? We're going to sing it one more time. Lord, I believe. I've been others. I've been others. Lord, I believe. Precious people, I'm going to ask you to look this way, please. Look this way. Will you turn this way? I am so excited that out of all the places where God could have sent you to either commence or continue your Christian journey, he sent you to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. I'm so excited about that today. I praise God for that. Listen, on behalf of that entire community of faith that's behind you, all these who are before you, I want you to know that you are welcome at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. I'm excited about your future. I'm excited to serve as your pastor. I'm excited about the great things that God is going to do in, with, through, and for you because you're a part now of this community of faith known as Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. On behalf of all of us, I say welcome again to our church family. You're going to get some information about what it means to be a new member of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, but I want you to feel this hug from all of us. This is a hug from every last one of us that says, Welcome to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Which way? All right, come on. Let's go this way, please. Let's go this way. Follow those individuals right there. Come on, celebrate them as they make their way. I believe in all.
leave from this place in just a moment. Let me thank those of you who've been very concerned about your pastor's health. I heard that y'all didn't want me hugging on the new members and all that kind of carrying on. I got a lot of messages saying, Pastor, don't do that. There's a virus in the land. Okay, I got you. So they stopped me from hugging new members. Y'all better pray that this virus goes away. I like to be, I like to touch and hug and be a part of the family. Amen. So we're going to pray that this virus goes away. But I'm going to be good. I'm going to be good because I don't want to be sick. I don't want to be sick. That's right. I hear you. I'm going to be good. It's me rolling my eyes. Amen. But I'm better safe than sorry. That's what my mama used to say. Better safe than sorry. So we'll get back to some normalcy at some point soon. But until then, let's keep praying that God will allow us to continue to, f to operate in safety at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Thank you so much for all the ways by which you are complying with the protocols. And uh, they tell me even I have to do the same. Amen. I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. Well, it's time for us to leave from this place. And we're going to leave celebrating the goodness of the Lord. I want to pronounce a benediction on you. And then our courtesy corps members are going to dismiss us in an orderly fashion. We're trying to still maintain some distance one, one from another. Uh, unless you're in that pod, in that, in that uh, bubble. Um, be very careful. Be very safe. Uh, numbers are spiking in some places across the country. We want to make sure that Houston, Harris County, Wheeler Avenue is not one of those places. Amen. We want to make sure that we are not one of those places. We've done so well. We've done so well over these several weeks that we've been together. I'm so grateful that God has kept us safe as a church family. And we praise God for that. Praise God for that. All right. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In your going out and in your coming in, in your labor and in your leisure, in your joy and in your sorrow, in your laughter and likewise in your tears until that day when we meet the Lord face to face and cry holy, holy, holy to the Lord of hosts. Until that day, my brothers, my sisters, go in peace, go in love, go in joy. And may the very God of peace, love, and joy, who can do it, go with you, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Please remain seated until the courtesy chord comes your way. Please remain seated. The music ministry will dismiss us on the wings of song.